It's the OCG Fam Show. Today we're talking about high soil pH and how alkalinity might fit into that too. It's gonna be fun. Let's get started. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it after the show. Right now, let's just get into the show. So, uh, high pH in your soil. The pH starts climbing up. It's a problem. And we've talked about this before, um, but we had the question asked in the last viewer questions episode and Scott took it on again. He's a champ. He's a, he's a gamer. And this time we did talk a little bit differently about it because we brought alkalinity into the topic. And we've talked about alkalinity before, like for instance, the pig farmer videos. Now a pig farmer, he was having an issue where this alkalinity thing was making his pH drop. He's just creeping down. He's pushing as hard as he can to get it up. Can't get it up. <laughs> but in this particular episode, we're going to be talking about someone that's got it too high and how alkalinity might be making that happen too. So <laughs> watch the clip and I'll talk to you after. Greg Lowe, if my soil pH is too high, what is, it, what is going to be the best way to lower it without much stress and shock to my plants? Multiple low pH feedings. Like it depends on what high is. And First, we probably want to address why you have high pH soil um, and what's high. Is it like mm -hmm. six, nine is high? Because that, that's fine. Yeah. Seven is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would do usually, if, if for some reason my soil ever gets above seven, then I just do a few Gaia feedings at six uh -huh. and I kind of try to saturate the, the root zone without getting it all to run out. I just want it to kind of sit in that root zone and slowly the natural acids will start to kind of buffer out the alkalinity or the high pH in that soil. And I didn't mean to say pH and alkalinity in the same sentence because mm -hmm. they're not the same thing. So some people would just do a flush if it was, you know. Right, but even a flush, it, you're, it's a flush, so it's going through, but yeah. it's not sitting and reacting. we got to react to it. I mean, so most of your pH is because there's a limestone or something that's building up in the soil that literally is reacting and giving you high pH. And so that's why the Gaia... Yeah, the guy is a low pH, and you're still giving it a full spectrum of food, uh, but still you're going to start reacting. I find it's probably one of the most aggressive acidic products we have when it comes to mm -hmm. feeding the plant and reacting to buffering pH. So, and are there dry amendments for lowering? There are, but it's like soybean meal, which if you can yeah. find me non-GMO soybean, then you're lying because there isn't such a thing. Uh -huh. And if there's like alfalfa will become more acidic, peat moss, you can, you know, top dress with like uh, just raw peat to get uh -huh. that. Uh, but not nearly tea. like what it is to go up with using some. Yeah, up is easier with yeah. dolomitic and yeah. kelp. Or, yeah. So I would just do Gaia washes until it's back into range. and then But discover why. It sounds like. If you have a RO filter or you have some type of filtration and you're in a region where you have high alkalinity, all your filters are full and the alkalinity is passing through your filtration and now it's building up in the soil. And we just dealt with this with a farm, complete polar opposite of pig's farm, which was going pure acidic and losing yield. These guys are going pure base and losing yield because their RO filters are pure white. All their pre-filters are pure white, but it's because all the calcite in their water has been being filtered out for uh -huh. a year, uh -huh. and all of a sudden it's their stuck. water pH is getting through, I mean the alkalinity is getting through, it's building up in the actual potting soil, and now their potting soil is coming out of pH of 8. And it's like, well, there goes your yield, uh -huh. if your pH in the root zone is 8, yeah. your plants are not eating no. what they need. So, once he removed all his filters, they did a couple of flushes with Gaia at a lower pH, and then the water coming out of the filters now are back and corrected. So you may just have too much alkalinity, which there is such a thing. But I would be interested in what your alkalinity is. If you're running a filter, if you're running a filter, I'd check your filters and the downfall of calcite is it's white like your filter. So if they're full of calcite, uh, you can't tell because they look clean. There's no way to tell. Well, wham. the only way to tell is weigh them. Yeah, okay. yeah. Weigh them wet when you first get them and weigh them wet about six months later. And if they weigh four more pounds, that's calcite. Then sell that to a guy who needs it and in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> using rainwater. He puts it in his and they'll draw the calcite back out. You just go back and forth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Find a guy with bad water on both sides of the country. You guys are set for life. Okay. What do you think of that? Informative, entertaining, helpful? Uh, have you run into that situation? What did you do? How do you feel about what uh, Scott said there? Let me know about those or anything else you might want to talk about. We'll get after it tomorrow. I'll see you then. I love you.
The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good, it happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.